Hello, everybody. Thank you and welcome to The Spark, where everyday people share their favorite source of inspiration and motivation with you to ignite positivity and energy when you need a little spark. I'm Amy Broghammer. Today, we welcome Greg McDaniel. Thanks for being on, Greg. Amy, it is my distinct pleasure. Thank you so much for thinking of me, and I enjoy being here, and I love spending time with you, so this is a double pleasure for me. Well, double pleasures are <laughs> all mine. Thank you. Uh, Greg is a real estate agent extraordinaire out in the San Francisco Bay Area, and um, he's a real estate agent, does some coaching and training, is a podcast guy, all kinds of stuff. Um, how did we meet Greg? Uh, I think we met through Aaron Wittenstein, uh, LGSO, and all the whole crew that we, were, that we were running together over there with for a short period of time. I actually got to meet you in the flesh a little over a year ago when you came out to San Francisco for Inman. We had to sit down, you, me, Beverly, B, and a few other folks had to have a lunch. And yeah, it was a blast. But we've known each other for a while now. Absolutely. It was fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Cool. All right. So I know that you have um, an underlying motivation for staying inspired. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I wanted to bring you on the show. I wanted to have you share what is your spark, your best spark, your most favorite spark, the thing that gets you motivated, inspired, that can create that, you know, positivity with people. Um, Share that with us. Tell us a little bit about what it is and, and describe it for us. Okay. So the thing that really kind of is, is my spark, uh, it goes back to 2006, 2007, when we had the crash. Um, I went completely broke. I went down to $35 down to my name. I went through bankruptcy. I went through foreclosure. Um, everyone around me was completely broke as well. Um, and it was a time where I was either going to die or I was going to fight. And I chose to stand up and fight. And I chose to work seven days a week. I would do door knocking. I would do calls. I would do follow-up letters. I would hit the database on a consistent basis, wore a tie every single day, and I never stopped ever once. Uh, so my spark is being broke. I remember distinctly the home I was living in. It was a 1950s home, had not been updated since 1950. They had gaps under the doors. The guy that I was living with, who's a brother of mine, um, he actually got bit by a black widow spider. I had to take him to the emergency room because it was such an infested house. Um, we were, I mean, a linoleum floors, drafty as all get out. And I remember laying there one day and I'm, I've been, I had a couple of drinks and I was at the bottom of my, of my, uh, of my time there and I just couldn't keep it together. And I remember I, I had collected $600. I'd worked to have, I had $600 to my name. And I remember looking at it and going, oh my God, I'm so rich. And then I went down and, I, and a couple of months later, I had $5,000 in my bank account. Now it's the richest I'd been in years. And I'm like, this is, there's no freaking way. This is where I'm going to stand and where I'm going to end up in my life. And I remember putting on my tie. And I didn't have a tie, by the way. I had to go borrow a tie that my dad used to wear. I had a hole eaten in it by a moth, two holes. I still have that photo somewhere around here. Um, and I had to borrow some slacks. I had to borrow a belt. I didn't have this stuff, right? Because I, I wasn't, that wasn't where my mind was. And so I, my dad took a picture of me and I couldn't figure out why I wanted to take the picture. And now, and I look back on it now very fondly going, that was a day that I was so desperate to change my life that I will do anything and, and, and everything to never go back to that ever again. So when I'm having a bad day, when I'm having some sort of, you know, a, a difficult time in my life, I sit there and I'm like, Greg, it's not as bad as it was. Remember when you had $600 to your name? Remember when you had $35 to your name and you remembered that you had traveler's checks and you, you tripled your net worth by traveler checks in one night? <laughs> that, was the, that was the happiest stinking day of my life, by the way, because it saved my bacon. I can actually pay my rent and a couple of other things. Um, but you know what? I will never go back to that spot. I don't care who I have to kill. I am never going back to that spot. I don't care how hard I have to work. I don't care what I need to do. I don't care what changes in my life. That is never going to be another reality for me. And so for me, when, I, when I'm looking at stuff, I just remember that drafty old house, the, the black widow spiders, you know, just the linoleum crap floors, you know, just everything about that house that just screams broke. And the other thing that I remember is I remember them po posting on my, cause I, I had moved into a, I, I had to sell both of my houses. One was a million dollar plus. The other one was about a $350,000 condo. And I sold my, I remember when I came home to my condo, they had put the uh, foreclosure notices 
on my door. They had taped them on my door for a whole freaking neighborhood to see. And I remember just being so hurt by that. I couldn't go to my friend's weddings because I couldn't afford it. I couldn't even go out and drink beer because I couldn't, I couldn't afford a $2.50 Bud Light. I hid in my house out of complete shame. And I, that's where the transformation took place, Amy. That's where I just stood up. I said, that's it. That's enough. No more. This is the end of the road of the BS of the train I'm riding on right now. And the next day changed. I started self-educating, stopped drinking so much. I, I, I got to the office at 6.30 in the morning, got, to the, got into the gym at 4.30 in the morning, worked out for two hours, got in the gym by 6.30, I mean the office by 6.30, studied until 9.00 on research, on real estate, on contracts, on mindset, on anything that was messing me up at that moment, I would be studying from 6.30 till nine. And I pulled myself out of that slump. And I remember that, I remember it so, so clearly. It's like a memory from yesterday. And that's what fires me up. That's my spark. That's what drives me. Some people have pretty cars, nice houses. Some people have this fairy tale thing that they, they, that's their spark. Mine's pure grit. I had nowhere and nothing to turn to except for the way I was going to handle myself. And so that's what I did. And I have never stopped. And I remind myself every single day that if you don't produce, you don't eat. And if you don't eat, you're going back to the drafty house in Lafayette. And that is not happening. So that's, that's kind of what gets me fired up if you couldn't tell a little bit there. <laughs> have you ever driven by the house? Uh-huh. I've driven by the house. It's this tiny super tiny little lane. It's like a one car lane, right? If another car comes, you got to like park on someone's grass. Right. And, uh, I've driven by the house and I've looked at it and you know, the houses on my, on the left was a complete garbage pile. I mean, down the street, I mean, this place was just a junkyard and just went to my mindset. And I, I drive by it. And I remember, I remember washing my car in the front driveway because I couldn't afford to get my car cleaned. I remember, you know, the fun times we had there, but also remember that it's a, it's a milestone when I think about it. And I'm like, you know what? I, I'm blessed to have this in my life. Because if I didn't have that experience in my life, there would be no drive. And I mean, I'm right now, I'm listening to a um, really great podcast by Joe Rogan and David Gaggins, uh, which if you haven't seen it, I'll forward it over to you. It's a phenomenal video about never giving up. And so it reminds me, this guy, way more badass than me, <laughs> like Navy SEAL, Army Ranger, Delta, <laughs> you know, all this world, you know, setting stuff all over the place. I'm like, whoa, I got a lot to live up to. But it's about, this guy never gave up. He went through hell and back. You know, I did my version of hell and back. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for it, but I really don't want to do it again. <laughs> yeah. I have the t-shirt. I don't need another one. It's, it's a, it's a good lesson in perspective. Yeah. You know, to be able to have something to look back on. And um, I guess another question I had for you is you could, you know, that, that whole adage um, growth happens right outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You had to get uncomfortable enough to make a change. But yeah. let me ask you this. There's a lot of people out there that, that would have gone the other way. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what was it that kept you from going the other way. <laughs> the other adage of like, if you're going to do something, you got to burn the boats, right? Because you have no other option. Burn the boats. And I had already burned my boat and burned bridges and burned everything else in my past because I'm a grade A, you know, wackadoodle at times. And I have a PhD, uh, public high school diploma. And that is it. Uh, and so, I mean, I failed out of college after two years, um, you know, and I have no formal education. So when I was, when I was when I was growing up in life, I was around my father, the grandmaster, me, Papa, the T Diddy. And, um, you know, 45, 47 years in the business, I couldn't understand why he was always talking about real estate everywhere. We want is real estate, real estate, real estate. And so it was ingrained into my body and my brain. I knew how to do this. And so I had no other skill set. And I sat there, I mean, I was honestly really, I don't think I've ever actually told this part of the story. I had no other place to go. I mean, this was it. I had to make this work. Otherwise, I would be working in a, in a kitchen somewhere or you know, well, you know, a greeter at Walmart because my skill sets, there, no one's going to hire me. I had, nothing, I had nothing saleable as an attribute that I can offer to an employer. They would have been like, yeah, great. Where'd you go to college? Oh, you failed out in two years. Yeah. Check mark in the delete box. And, and during, during the market shift where there were not even a lot of jobs. Yeah. There was nothing available. And I, 
And I remember, I remember when I sat down, it was a Saturday morning. I had my team around me. I had this young guy and this young gal. They would, I made them come in. They didn't stay in the team very long. They didn't like this whole Saturday morning working thing. Um, but I remember sitting in the office and we were, had gotten back from our Friday afternoon door knocking. We had a list of about 10 people we need to write thank you letters to because I made each one of them pick three to five people every single day and write thank you letters to them. Um, that was before send out cards and all the rest of this goodness, or for at least I knew about it. And um, I remember like, this isn't that hard. I mean, people put so much, you know, put such a spotlight on how hard it is to do real estate. It's not hard. It's not hard at all, but it's not simple either. You just got to take, you know, discipline and consistency, blend them together, bake the cake, and here you go. You can make a very good living. And I remember sitting there going, this is it. This is all I have to do. All I have to do is show up, do what I know I'm supposed to do, call through the database, and guess what? I started getting deal after deal after deal after deal after deal because I showed up to work. I didn't show up to play house. I didn't show up to play office and move. You know, there's a stack of papers here. Let's put the stack of papers over here. Then let's move it back over here. Whew, call it a day. No, you just show up and grind. And so, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's where I come from. And that's why I, I do what I do. I had no choice whatsoever. So, yeah. It's, so you don't have that picture like prominently displayed somewhere? No, it's in Facebook somewhere. I should probably get it out, print it out, and then put it up here as a reminder of like, you look like an idiot, McDaniel. Um, and I'm not kidding you, Amy. I think the pants are about this too high. So I was, looking, I was waiting for a flood as well. I was just a walking wardrobe of perfection. So totally, yeah, right. <laughs> totally transparent question. Um, did your dad just make you do it on your own? Because I know he's a very supportive person in your life now. He was right alongside me the entire time. So was my mom. You know, my whole team was right alongside me when I came back onto the team. Um, and I left very unceremoniously. I, uh, I sat down. That's why I do the podcast, Real Estate Uncensored, is because I wanted to be uncensored and I wanted to give back because I sat down and I, and I, and I said to my father, my business partner, I said, you know, can I come back on the team? And I believe me, I was a complete a-hole when I left. I mean, it was like a middle finger, I'm out the door, slam the door kind of a like Did you exit. just have some kind of ego issue or some? I don't know what went wrong with me. I had a wire cross. I don't know what, 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 what triggered that. Um, but I'll tell you one thing that, I mean, when I came back on, I remember Terry and Chris looking at each other and, you know, they both looked at each other like this and it took them probably five seconds. Like, yeah, you can come back on. And so... You know, that's where I, my dad's never, never not supported. He's always said, Hey, look, Greg, anything I can do to help you, whatever I can do to help build your business and your coaching, whatever it is you're doing, I want to help you. And he did the same thing in real estate. Now he did it more passive aggressively in real estate because he's the type of guy that he'll just let you go until you fall on your face. Unless he embarrass, unless you embarrass him and then he'll smack you upside the head in a very <laughs> loving way. Um, but yeah, he was always right there. You know, you know, we were working on uh, the tracking sheets together. We were role playing together. Uh, he was giving me ideas for objection handling. I mean, it was a collaborative effort all the way through. So yeah, it was it was a blessing to to have him in my life, and still is. And my mom, they're just they're amazing parents. They're amazing people because they get it. He did it for forty five to forty seven years. I don't know. There's a discrepancy in there. Uh, she's been with him the entire time. Her as the back end. Uh, like helping him make sure that his grammar and his colors and everything yeah. that he's not that good at, he would do, he would look good at. So yeah. Yeah. Always good. Always very, very supportive. When was the last time you drove by that house? I actually recently did it about a month ago. I was uh, going out to show some buyers and do some door knocking and I had to come around this curve and I'm like, Oh, the house. So just you turn, come right into this little street and just did the slow roll. I had the Jeep SRT with me. So the windows were yeah. all blacked out. So nobody could see who I was. Um, I just did the slow creeper roll past the house, probably freaked out the neighborhood. Um, but it did. It's the same. Absolutely yeah. the same. There's this tree in the front yard. This was the messiest stinking tree. And I remember every time someone came into the house, they would track half the stinking tree into the house. So I was constantly cleaning. And I love my roommate, but he didn't do anything for cleaning. <laughs> oh, gosh. So that's another part that drove me nuts about that place. Fun, fun. Yeah. So you mentioned to me when we originally talked about a book that helped you at that time period and that you recommend to people. Yeah, so this is a book that changed my life. It's called Follow Your Passion, 
Find Your Power uh, by Bob Doyle. And um, what I, since I was, I was in such a bad place in my life, um, I, 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 I couldn't see what was up and what was down. I, 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 I'd read the secret thing and, I, and I'm like, what is missing with this whole secret, this whole law of attraction? And I started identifying what it was and it was about the fact that like when I said I wanted something, I'd get that compressing feeling on my chest like or a thousand pounds of weights on your shoulders. Like, like Amy, you're going to make $2 million this year. No, I'm not. You can't do that. That thought that we all have. And I'm like, there's got to be a way to get rid of this. There's got to be something to, 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 to eliminate this. And I found it in the book and that's what I found so powerful. I learned about the Sedona method. And it's so simple that it's laughable because what you do is you first, you accept and you hold, sorry, accept and to hold your feeling that you're having. You know, okay, this is the feeling I have. And you ask yourself three simple questions. Could I release it? Would I release it? When? When? When. So you ask yourself, could I release this? And you give yourself a binary answer. Yes or no. No dilly dallying in the middle. It's a yes or no answer. Could I release it? Yes. And it's okay if you say no too, by the way. If you say no, you'll release some level of that energy. But I'm like, I'm the one want to release some level. I want to re- release all this energy. So I said, could I release it? Yes. Would I release it? Yes. When? Take a deep breath in. Now. And I started feeling this weight fall off me. And I listened to that book so many times. And this, guys, this is back when I had my 2004 Denali. Joy of my life, by the way. $650 a month payments on this thing. I'd picked oh. out everything. It was awesome, right? I had to give it to a friend of mine for several months because I couldn't afford the payments. I had to drive a busted, you know what, you know, car for a while. And that SOB brought it back with a freaking door dang in it. I wanted to strangle him, but I got my car back, sort of releasing all this energy. And I listened to it in the CD player for 18 months to the point where my CD player started rebelling. He's like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> We're not playing it one more time. <laughs> and you were listening on CDs. On CDs. You know where I am on that one, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, I couldn't afford a $14 a month Audible account. I mean, that's when I, I had a $50 a month, uh, $50 a week gas allowance. That was it for showing or anything else. I had to be very specific on who and where I was going to do anything because I was on such a tight budget. I would go to the store and I would, I remember I would buy the cheapest peanut butter, the cheapest jelly, the cheapest bread. You know, I'd buy ramen and I, for four or five bucks on my card, I prayed to God, my card would not get declined and I would be embarrassed and have to make a dumb excuse and walk out of the store hungry. That happened one time. It was the most embarrassing thing on my, uh, on, on, in life. And that's what drives me so much. And that's why people always ask me, Greg, how can you, how, how can you have all this stuff going on? How can you do it all? It's really simple. I'm not going back to that freaking drafty house in Lafayette. I'm not going back to sitting there hoping $5 on my credit card is going to be approved. I'm, my, I, my, my battery died. It was my birthday. It was 6 a.m. I couldn't, I, I couldn't afford AAA. My mom and dad, who were in the same position, super broke because they had lost everything in the crash too, right? Um, and I had to call my mom crying on my birthday because I couldn't afford a, a tow in my car My mom came down. She split the uh, the three hundred dollar battery on two credit cards because she couldn't put it on one. Not going back to that. I don't care. So that's what I do, and it sucked, but it also made me who I am. And I'll never forget. My mom came over and she gave me a big hug. She, you could see that she was embarrassed. But she goes, she said, she said to me, you know, happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. There's that side of me. <laughs> I got you crying too. <laughs> I did my job. Oh my God. Ah. Uh. Now That's you know probably job. the best thing she could have got you for your birthday. I was on. Ugh, it's the best thing and ever. That was just unbelievable. Being, just being a mother of boys myself, they'll do anything for them. Oh yeah. And to be able to to not be able to do that for your kids is painful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, thankfully, I was able to repay my parents. Um, 
they have, they tell this story now. I never told this story until they started telling the story and I told them to shut up, but they never listened to me. Um, I got a call from my dad um, and I had amassed about a $20,000 to my name at this point. I'd really, I mean, I had my, 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 my little nest egg and you know, reciprocity is a powerful thing. And so they showed me such love and compassion and stayed by my side through, you know, the, the goods and the bads. And I remember my dad calls me up, goes, Greg, I'm like, yeah, dad, what's up? He's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm whatever I was doing, right. I was doing something at the office and I'm like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, I need $16,000. I'm like, uh, uh, okay, why? He's like, if I don't get $16,000, we're going to lose the house. Yeah. I'm like, um, excuse me? Because he had all these friends that were all big, big ballers and no one stepped up to the plate to help him. And so I didn't care, dude. It's my dad. Went to my house, went to the bank. I withdrew $16,000. Met him at his bank, gave him a big old stack of bills. I'm like, here you go. I, told, I kept $5,000 for myself just to survive on, but I gave him the 16000 that he needed. And, uh, you know, they said at that point that if they had not gotten the money, they would have been, they would have, they would have lost the house that I grew up in. And so everything that happens in life happens for a reason. So I went through that challenging time with the car and everything else so that then I could then go give my father the money that he needed to save his house. Um, I actually never thought I would see that money again. I thought it was just, you know, it was a hail Mary. We're going to see what's going to happen. And you know, my parents are incredibly resilient. They're very intelligent people. Um, and I never asked them for the money because frankly, it was already gone. It was no longer there. Uh, my dad did pay me back uh, and he did pay me back in interest with this. Um, I didn't have an iPad. So I got myself an iPad, thousand, fifteen hundred, you know, $2,000 iPad at the time. And I'm like, dad, I don't need that. I don't need that. He's like, you need this because this is what our agreement was. I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And uh, so when you guys are having that down, if you guys are listening to this and you got some tears dropping down your face, if that's the case, and you, you think your life is really hard and you're going through some trib tribulations and everything else, just know for the fact that if you hustle and grind and you never give up and you never look around to compare yourself on social media or anything else to what everyone else is doing and you just make it happen because you have to, I guarantee you, if you don't stop, you will succeed. I guarantee you, like I can guarantee you, I'm going to take my next breath here in a second. I mean, it, it is a fact of life. You know, I'm still growing. Amy knows me. I'm kind of a whack job <laughs> most of my life and other parts of it, but it's, uh, it, it gave me the ability to create who I wanted to be. Kind of a question that just came to my mind is you rode through the, the crash, right? And you were okay. in real estate and you had properties that caused you to lose everything. Mm -hmm. Real yep. estate based. And you continue to stay in the business. You continue to work in the business after the business had taken everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why did you stay? Because so many people, and I write about this in my book, so many people, when that happened, they said, oh, you're getting out of real estate now, aren't you? I'm sure you're going to go back and get another job now, right? And I was like, no, 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 no. We're, we're writing this out. What, why did you stay? Because you got hit a hell of a lot harder than all of us. Mm-hmm. Why did you persist? I had no choice. Um, I also really, I mean, anyone who knows me knows that I look up to my father significantly. And I've always wanted this thing. I, he's, he's been in one career. He's been in his real estate career for almost 50 years. That's something I desperately wanted. I didn't want to be a quitter. I couldn't just, I couldn't just give up when, the, when it got hard, you know, one time or a couple of times. I, if he could do it, I could do it. You know, in the movie The Edge, you know, Anthony Hopkins is talking to Alec Baldwin when they're out in the, out in the woods and they, they crash and they're trying to make it back to, their, to this cabin where, the, where all their people were and there's this bear that's chasing them, right? This big freaking grizzly bear that wants to have them as a snack. And Anthony Hopkins, you know, is a reader and a billionaire and everything else. I won't bore you the details. Um, but he just looks at Alec Baldwin and just goes, if one man can do it, another can do it. Then he yells it. If one man can do it, another can do it. And he was sharpening this giant stick to, to stab the bear, right? And they end up killing the bear. Plot killer right there for you guys. But <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I will never forget that. If one man can do it, another can do it. 
My dad came from Wasco, California. Do you know where Wasco is? It's right next to Lost Hills. They named Lost Hills for a reason. It's lost in the hills. And he was supposed to work at Delano Motors, a used car dealership. He was working in a sheep, sheep herders you know, farm since he was seven years old. His dad died when he was seven, so it's kind of correlation there. Raised by his mom, then he moved in with his bigger, older sister by 20 years. Strange story. Um, and you know, he, no one thought he would do anything. But he said, that's not how my life's going to play out. Then he went to Boulder, Colorado, met my mom, got a college education, went back to Madison, Wisconsin, got an MBA in residential finance. He beat the odds. So I'm like, well, I can do that too. I can do that. I'm not going to quit. It's going to be hard. Life is hard. This is where you grow. Like you said, Amy, you know, you grow outside of your comfort zone. And that's where I consistently like to stay is stay out of my comfort zone in some way, shape or form in my life. Because that's where your growth takes place. Otherwise, you're just, there, people always say we're going to stay status quo. That's a complete fallacy. There is either progress or regress. Because when you're staying status quo, everyone else is either moving forward or they're moving backward. You're the only idiot staying still. So in, in, in default, you actually are regressing. So I refuse to regress. I'm always going to be progressing. Like, I mean, you should see all this stuff. I mean, you know me, I'm taking notes on everything. I'm always, I'm going through a, a coaching class with uh, Glenn Twiddle right now. It's about a $30,000 class. Um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly, have, I have YouTube. I have, I have probably like 20 different tabs open here. Three or four of them are all YouTube things that I'm like stuttering around with my dyslexic rear end, you know, and ADHD. I'm like, oh, I'm bored of that one. I'm going to start this one. I'm going to start that one. I'm going to close that one. But I know I'm a student of my craft and I'm a student of where I want to be. Because I'm always chasing, like Matthew McConaughey said in his famous speech, I'm always chasing who I'm going to be in 10 years. I'm never going to catch who I am, but I'm sure as heck going to chase it. Well, at least you're moving forward. I'm progressing, girl. I am not regressing. That is not going to happen. <laughs> That's the Lafayette, you know, drafty house. Nobody wants to be in the Lafayette drafty, drafty no. house. We know that. No, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, geez, that was um, more than I was expecting. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure that that was a walk down memory lane for you and a reminder of, of your spark and, and where you're going in life. And it was. I had not thought about some of that stuff in quite a while. Um, but it's good to be reminded of that pain because sometimes you forget about it and it just goes water under the bridge. And once it goes past, you forget about it out of sight, out of mind. And I just, it's good to be reminded of that. So I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate we talk, we're talk, what we're talking about here. Hopefully this has touched somebody else in a way that they can, you know, really kind of buck up, put their big boy pants on, the big girl pants on, put the, you know, the butt kicking boots on and get back out there to work and just never, ever stop, ever. I really appreciate you sharing because there's so many people out there that feel alone. Maybe this ha happened to them and they're embarrassed to tell anybody and they never think that anybody else, that this has ever happened to anybody else. And, and maybe they make this connection with you and realize that it wasn't just them. And, you know, that they are now able to see that you have persisted and consistently moved forward and that they can do that too. Yeah. And, and that's what the spark is about is inspiring people to move forward. Yeah, I was having a conversation with a, uh, well, there is a gentleman, uh, we all know this individual, um, and he had called me up and said, hey, I need some, I need some McDaniel motivation. I'm like, okay, what do you need, buddy? <laughs> and so I talked to this individual for mm, probably about 45 minutes today. And, you know, this person is very successful, very, very well known. And, um, you know, it, we, we were talking about kind of where he was and where he is and kind of whole progression. And, even people that are incredibly visible, that everybody thinks that there's just roses under their feet the entire time. People, every one of us is fighting a battle we know nothing about. You're fighting something I don't know. I'm fighting something you don't know. And so when people put on a good face and when people put on a good show, you have to know that there is some sort of pain in there. And that when you see someone lashing out at you, if you see someone kind of being a jerk to you, or just give them some grace. Let them know for the fact that that person is having a battle and just, you know, love on them a little bit because you know what? They're going to remember the kind people to them after they get through this crisis in their life. Because everyone else is going to want to be mean to them and talk sh trash about them and, you know, belittle them. When in reality, they could just, I mean, I could just if I knew you were having a bad day, I'd just call you up and I'm like, what up, B? How's life? I know you're kind of, it looks like you're a little down today. What's up? You know, that kind of friendship 
is what really helps a lot. Now, us agents, as, as agents, you know, being friends to each other, it's a foreign concept. I mean, with our company, EXP, it's the only company I've ever seen where people are completely collaborative and they actually want to come in and they want to help another agent. In my past brokerage, and maybe in yours as well, it was very much like a dog eat dog, stabby in the back. Oh, you're yeah. listening at 123 Main Street? Oh, well, 123 Main Street, here I go. I tell people all the time, uh, I have better, more quality relationships with somebody like you in California or somebody like Hank in Michigan yeah. than I do with a single person in Cincinnati. It's crazy, huh? Because no longer are we bound to our geography. Yeah. There's no excuses. There's no reason why anybody can't be mentored by anybody else, why anybody can't get sparks from somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and the world is limitless today. It really is limitless, 100%. I mean, I, um, like we talked about when you'd come on the podcast. I mean, I, mean, I, I still, you know, it's not it's in there. Um, I still carry around your, you know, your ideas for videos. And I still show people, like, go, go download this from Amy B. <laughs> You know, because we all have unique things that we're bringing to the table. So guys, whoever's listening to this and watching this, you, got, you have a unique power. I call it your superpower. There's something inside of you, probably more than one thing, that is something that's uniquely you know, incredible. And I think that uh, if you guys understand that and identify what that is, this spark, maybe this sparked you, maybe one of other Amy's other interviews may have sparked you, but take that spark and then pay it forward to someone immediately. You know, don't hold on to it and cover it up. I mean, share, share, show your freak flag. I mean, whatever that thing is, share it. Let other people know what's going on so they can resonate with you. You'll make friends. You'll influence people. It'll be a very powerful situation for you. Like Amy's doing right now with this phenomenal, you know, series with Sparks. This is going to impact tens of thousands of people's lives because she's taking back the covers and she's saying, hey, look. There's people, this is what got them going. Find the one that you like and resonate with it and then go be amazing. And I love what you're doing, by the way. I think it's amazing never, stuff. You never know how it all works out. It's just kind of dots connect and things happen and ideas come and, you it know, <laughs> uh, I came up with this idea two days ago and here, or one day ago, actually, and now here we are. So <laughs> um, speaking about uh, goodness and great things, Greg, what yes. are you proud of right now? What is it that you're working on? What, what is it that we can all um, connect with you about? I'm going to show you something. I have a little black book. Oh, yeah. Not that type of black book, Amy. Another black book. Another black book. So this is my, this is my notebook, guys. This is, uh, it was in my second drawer right over here. I wrote this in 2014. Okay, I opened this up last Tuesday. And it's this crummy-looking piece of paper here. Pull this thing out. And this is the day that I was driving uh, to San Francisco uh, to meet with the KGO, 810, 810 Talk Radio, uh, the most powerful station in all of Northern California, 50,000 watt station. And I, and I was driving into my Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. I wrote down two years ago that I wanted, or four, four years ago, I wanted a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. I wanted to do radio. I wanted to develop leads. And I wanted to, do, I wanted to start tapping. You wanted to start what? Tapping. Uh, EFT tapping. It's an energy release system. A guy named Brad Yates on YouTube does it. I, I follow him all every morning. I know it sounds weird and you're going to think you're a complete retard when you do it your well, first it time. it works for you, man. It works. But I, <laughs> the thing I'm really proud of is that I wrote this down four years ago. And you guys can't see this and that's good because it's horrible writing. And, you know, I, it came true. So the mo thing I'm most proud of is the fact that I've had the opportunity to impact tens of thousands of lives in a positive way, people I'll never meet in my entire life, most likely. And they've been able to take what Matt and I have built with, this, with, with, with the podcast and I followed our dream there. And now I'm progressing over to the radio show, which we start on, as of this recording, it starts on August 12th. So not this Sunday, the next Sunday. And it's a massive investment that we're getting sponsors to cover and everything. But it's something that's a bucket list for me. I am going to be on a radio show, which I plan on dominating all of California within six, eight, six, eight months. And then I'm going to take over the country in probably 12 months to 18 months. No joke. I already have my expansion plan put into place, but that's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of the influence that I've had and people that they've been able to go out and change their lives. I mean, Neely Freeman is one of my dear close friends and she was a nurse. She had one foot in nursing, one foot in real estate. And I kicked her squarely in the rear end. Uh, in several conversations, and she took the jump. Her first month after doing some coaching with me and some other stuff, she went from part-time agent to number one in her office, 
in one month in listings. And she has never stopped propelling herself to just massive, you know, success. And now she's going to start working as a, tra- as one of the trainers in her brokerage. And those types of stories trickle in all the time. And that's what makes me excited. That's what makes my heart work and warm up because it's not about recognition for me in any way, shape or form. It's the recognition that someone took action in their lives and they moved forward and they started changing it to what they wanted to be. That is the most cool thing on earth ever. It is very cool to plant a seed and watch it grow. Yes. Yes, it is. And you're a phenomenal seed planner. So I know you, you, you get a kick out of it just like I do, just like Hank does, just like every, all the rest of us trainers out there that are doing something. It's just fun to watch someone grow into the person they always wanted to be and you always saw in them. You know? But yeah, tune in to KGO 810 Talk Radio at 8 a.m., guys, Pacific Standard, and check out the radio show. I can't, I mean, I have to, I, this, I have to be- not in California. How do we hear the radio show? KGO 810 Talk Radio. Okay. Um, yeah, just, start, just go to KGO, I think, dot com or whatever. I'll, I'll give you the link. Okay, um, perfect. 8 a.m. on Saturday mor- uh, Sunday mornings, Pacific Standard Time, and you can hear me uh, t- booming through the, uh, the airwaves. So, uh, yeah, that's my bucket list. That's what I'm very that's proud so of. That's so exciting. I'm excited. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty stinking cool. It is pretty stinking cool. <laughs> I, I can't know. say enough about having a vision board or having written goals on paper and being able to look back at them and realize how much has – come to fruition. I mean, it's the most rewarding thing ever to you know look back at stuff. It really is. And you know what even more fun is going back to, I do it on Pinterest, um, going back onto my Pinterest board and going, got that, got that, that's on the way, got that. And then I delete them. I'm like, got you, check, got you, check, got you, check. And then you're just able to clear it up for more cool stuff to show up in your life. Um, you, you, you know, Jeff Latham, right? No. Oh, he's a, he's a riot. He's been on the show a couple of times. He's like a, he's like the Zen Buddha master of real estate. He's, he's hilarious. Um, but he, he told me one time on our first interview and he forgot, he forgot he told me this, um, that, you know, he said, Greg, you know, goals are like a piece of paper, right? And, you know, if you want to get to one end of the paper, you gotta, you know, you gotta travel to it. But what if you could take the two tips of the paper and bring them together to touch? I'm like, well, how do you do that? (laughs) <laughs> he's, I'm like, teach me Zen master. And uh, he's like, what he did is he took his cell phone and he had an alarm every hour on the hour an alarm would go off. He would take it and then he would go, okay, let's review my goals. And he would review his goals, right? Every hour on the hour stuff just started showing up. I mean, the guy just bought a massive yacht. He, ha- he, he has a, he's a part owner in an airplane, um, wow. his team was doing, it was on track to do a billion dollars in volume. He scaled them back. Cause he, he just way too much overhead. He just climbed a, a mountain. He and I are going to go climb another mountain together, which is something I've, I've never wanted to do, but he talked me into <laughs> <laughs> who wants to go freeze their tail feathers off and go like thin oxygen. How, how is this fun? A beach and a Mai Tai is fun. <laughs> much better. Uh, much better. But I mean, he, his dreams came to him because he focused so specifically on his goals and he was intentional about where he was going with stuff. It's like when you, um, you were, when you were a kid, right, Amy, of course you were. <laughs> um, maybe your boys might do this. They take a magnifying glass. Do kids even play with magnifying glasses? Oh, anymore? And burn them, yeah. Like burn a hole in paper and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with goals. If you're going to get to the point where you can burn a hole in paper, you got to be super laser focused, not just kind of blase and just like, Oh, we got the, yep. you know, the magnifying glass out, just kind of sitting over something. And that's what he did. That's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. Um, and hopefully that will spark people to move forward to whatever the next level that they're trying to obtain. Awesome. Cool. Really appreciate your time today, Greg. We're going to put your radio link in the information. Cool. Thank you so much for being so transparent and so willing to share. It was sure. amazing. For you, Amy, I, I would did not want to hold anything back. And I'm glad that this hopefully was helpful. And I really appreciate you having me on. I truly hope that it connects on a deep level with somebody and, and helps them. I think it will. I think it will too, because we both cried. So someone else has to cry now. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome, Amy. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye.